Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Canada's bilateral trade with Spain is about $6.5 billion, making Spain Canada's 18th largest partner. As members of NATO and signatories to many bilateral and multilateral agreements, Spain and Canada have much in common. Here to discuss this relationship with me is His Excellency Alfredo Martinez Serrano. He is Spain's ambassador to Canada. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Clement. It's really a pleasure to be with you today. It's our pleasure as well. Uh, let, let me offer you the first word then. How would you characterize uh, Spain's trade and other relationships with Canada? It is really an outstanding relation that has been growing uh, very sharply in the last few years. I must tell you that our economic and business relations are very strong, thanks mainly to CETA, which is having a very clear positive effect. We are celebrating the fifth anniversary of this preferential trade agreement between the European Union and Canada, and Spanish business firms are extremely active in taking advantage of it. But overall, it's a very complete relation that not only is focused on economic issues, but that goes beyond that. And at political level, the relations couldn't be stronger at the current time, but also at the cultural, scientific, and academic level, we need really to tell you that we are very much like-minded countries. Indeed. Uh, maybe just uh, uh, just talk a little bit more about uh, trade relationship. What What's the source of the activity? What sorts of things are we trading back and forth? Well, the figures that you have provided are absolutely accurate, but uh, that's not enough for us. We have a tremendous potential. Uh, we are exporting to, to Canada pharmaceuticals, engines, of course, agri-food products, uh, planes. And this is showing that this overall relation is complex and at the same time is increasing. And we are importing from Canada also technological products, chemicals and minerals. We can go uh, farther on because actually, I must tell you that Spain is the 15th economy in the world. It is the fourth economy in the Eurozone and our potential is huge. Mm -hmm. What's, what sort of growth areas are there in the Spanish economy these days then? Well, uh, actually Spain has been facing the crisis through several instruments. I can tell you that our figures happen to be quite positive. We will be growing this year over 4%. And at the same time, we are envisaging at least 2% growth for 2024. Uh, it is crystal clear that the complexity of the moment cannot be denied, in the sense that the whole world economy is affected. But we are reacting quite well through several measures that have been adopted by the government, by a Spanish institution, and uh, of which Spanish society is absolutely aware of. Uh, I must tell you in a very clear way also that inter internationalization and also several policies that tackle inflation are absolutely needed and we are on the right path. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I think you may have answered my next question, which is uh, inflation, cost of living, those are issues that are afflicting Spain as well? Yes, Mr. Clement. One of the things that I'd like to underline, generally speaking, as an ambassador and as a diplomat, is that problems have become universal. Um, every single country is affected by the same trends. Of course, the reactions and the effects can be different, but inflation is a main problem all around the world. Uh, we are close to 7% of inflation right now, a figure which is very similar to the Canadian one and trying to control it, but at the same time, developing some social policies that happen to be of paramount importance in order to aid consumers and to try to help as much as we can business firms. And is that starting to work? Yes, uh, we have seen a very positive effect. Uh, there are two dimensions which I would like to underline. The first one is definitely energy price. You know that the world is suffering from a terrible situation as far as energy security is concerned, very much linked to uh, the invasion by Russia of Ukraine. But also at the same time, we try to have an impact on transport and on something very important, which is the food bath. Right. And so far, the measures that are being implemented 
are working on a reasonable way without solving the structural problem that is being faced by all the Western world. Indeed. Uh, thank you for that. We're just going to take a brief bre break right now. We'll be back with you, sir, after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with His Excellency Alfredo Martinez Serrano. He is uh, Spain's ambassador to Canada. Uh, sir, uh, you mentioned uh, CETA. That's the, uh, the press, uh, the, the free trade, rather, agreement uh, with Europe. Uh, maybe delve a little bit deeper. Uh, very interesting. You said it, it's now at its five-year anniversary. So tell us a little bit what, what you have observed and what your government has observed with uh, with the uh, expansion of trade with Canada on that front. Well, it's very important to know, and this is the key issue, that CETA is a very special instrument. We have two countries uh, that are very much like-minded, uh, structurally from the economic viewpoint, very close. So this means that we have gone beyond a traditional trade agreement. CISA is not only about trade, but it's also about a certain cosmovision, which happens to be shared. There are labor standards, uh, there are environmental standards within CISA, and it is bringing us together in a certain framework. The European Union, and this is very important for Canadian viewers, is probably the most fascinating integration project in the world. We are 27 countries, and there is something very important. The vast majority of them have ratified already a CETA. Since we have this instrument, this is showing not only the political will, but the potential, as far as trade relations are concerned, to interact between us. And many Spanish firms, attracted by this level of stability and security of the framework, are selling their products in Canada, and on the other hand, Canadian firms in Spain. This is the situation that has provided us with such an instrument that grants us a huge potential to make our trade grow. So elaborating in a very concrete manner, I can tell you that our trade relations have increased in the last five years by more than an average of 33% in general between Canada and the European Union. Mm. And the growth in Spain is even sharper. We are around 35 36%. And this framework tackles also another two dimensions of the economy. One, very important also for the viewers, investment, because this is about trust and this is about money flows. So this means that investment from Canada and Spain have been growing and the investments of Spain in Canada have been growing too. And third issue, Spanish business firms, due to this framework that grants us trust and credibility, are coming here to stay. So you will be seeing that, for instance, two lines in Toronto uh, subway, um, Ontario line and Scarborough line will be built by Spanish firms in consortium soon and with alliances with Canadian firms. All this economic environment is so important and it's showing that our country share many things, uh, Mr. Clement, uh, from demographics to a certain conscience of middle powers around the world and a commitment to certain principles and values. We feel very close to Canada. That's very interesting. And uh, what you've just highlighted indicates that uh, procurement is open and free as well. So uh, uh, I'm presuming, uh, according to the tenets of the, uh, the trade agreement uh, and economic agreement more broadly, as you've mentioned, uh, that uh, you have to be open to bidders from, ar from around the European Union and Canada into the European Union. Is that correct? That's correct. And this is so important for consumers and for citizens in general. If you open competition, prices come down, go down. And we have also a great advantage. We can cooperate also on the technological side and in a different dimension that will be providing services to citizens. So this openness of economy has a direct impact in our lives. Um, I wanted to, to also talk a little bit about uh, something that you referenced in the first segment, which is some of the, some of the technological and innovation uh, uh, things that are going on in Spain, but perhaps even collaborations that uh, deserve highlighting. Uh, we've got, a, got about a minute to go. I might, might have to cut you off, but uh, please uh, start with your explanation of that. Yes. Uh 
my explanation is very simple. And if we need to communicate something to our viewers, is that we are in the middle of the technological and digital revolution. And if we want to be front runners around the world, we need to manage this situation wisely. So this means that you need to grow in multilateral and bilateral relations within the framework of technology. Spain and Canada are working hard. And let me tell you about three measures that are stimulating these relations. The first one, which is of paramount importance, is that Canada is negotiating its presence in several international instruments, such as the program Horizon. Minister Champagne was in Brussels quite recently. I think we're going to have to cut it off there. Uh, hold right. that thought. Uh, we're going to take a brief commercial break. I had to interrupt you there, but please continue with this uh, discussion of uh, technology and innovation. Yes, in fact, uh, what I would like to underline is that we are giving several steps forward to have a better framework. And we have programs that have a lot of financial support. But let me tell you also about two concrete actions that have been developed quite uh, recently by Spain. And they are extremely remarkable. The first one is the creation of the Association of Spanish Scientists in Canada that has been presented at Toronto University. Um, and this is uh, bringing me the chance and the possibility to elaborate on something essential. Mr. Clement, one thing that we really need to remember when we are diplomats in a country is that the strength of Spain and Canada sometimes lies on a, their civil societies, our universities, our academies, our foundations, our associations, and our people. And we have very talented people. We are both countries among the first 10 powers in science in the world, and putting together and linking these elements and these strengths is essential. So we are doing that with this association, but also with concrete programs that are signed between our universities or among our main scientific actors. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, perhaps uh, energy and green tech. Are these areas of interest between Spain and Canada as well? Huge interest. Well, you know perfectly, and uh, we need to underline that, that all the world is suffering from this energy crisis. But at the same time, there's a geopolitical situation. and Like-minded countries should be working more together in order to manage interdependence. This is the clear concept. And the other word is diversification. You need to diversify in order to accomplish also the objectives um, that has been established by international conventions. Do not ever forget that we are celebrating right now COP15 in Montreal, but at the same time, and this is the issue, the objectives have been settled by international treaties and by certain commitments by the government. So we are in the middle of a transition that we really need to manage. Cooperation between Canada and Spain is concrete and clear. We are cooperating with common investments um, and with renewables, but also at the same time with very narrow talks. Um, my Minister of Environment and Ecological Transition is meeting also uh, the person responsible in Canada of these files and pushing forward a very clear coordination at international level with leadership uh, in this situation that has a clear social, economic, and global impact. Let's, uh, let's broaden it out a little bit because you did refer to obviously the war in uh, Ukraine, uh, the invasion by Russia. Uh, we, we seem to be in uncertain uh, economic and political times right now. So I'd uh, love to get, again, your point of view about how Spain is seeing what's happening in Europe uh, and the, the broader issues uh, the, as it relates to NATO. Wonderful. Uh, I must tell you that uh, regarding the position of Spain, we are on the same page than Canada. Uh, we have condemned this invasion. And um, let me tell you, because sometimes we do not underline the two key issues. The first issue is that one nuclear power, uh, which happens to be a member of the Security Council, has invaded a sovereign country and its territory. And the second issue is that, of course, uh, we need to think about rule of law uncertainty when we have a world that is changing so far and we want to mm, be in geopolitical discussions about what will be the transformation. So there are two issues with huge impact on our lives and we need to bear in mind 
that supporting Ukraine is supporting a sovereign country, but it is also supporting a certain concept on how the world is trying to be redefined. We are with freedom, we are with dignity, we are with human rights, and uh, Ukraine enjoys the unwavering support of the European Union and of countries like mine. The second issue, which is also important, and I would like also to, to bring that to, to the table, is that we are perfectly aware that we really need to support Ukrainian people, especially facing the winter right now. And we are very much involved not only in military support, but also in human support, and Spain and Canada are being very active in this uh, dimension. Yes, yeah, so uh, briefly, just to summarize, you are giving military support, but you're also dealing with some of the humanitarian issues as well. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yes, because it's a question also uh, on the front. I mean, the war is not only uh, a war, of course, at military level, but it's also humanitarian. Right, right. And that's the second front that has been opened, especially with the arrival of winter, and we need to uh, express our solidarity right. and lead some acts to the Ukrainian people. I'm just going to take another brief break, sir. Uh Your Excellency, we were just talking about, obviously, the, uh, the fallout from Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine, which is almost into its second year now. Uh, one of the other thing that's, the things that has happened as a result of that invasion is, is uh, uh, again, uh, supply chain disruption. Uh, not only because of that, but certainly it has enhanced that. Uh, is Spain uh, looking to diversifying its supply chains as a result of these, uh, these issues? As I was underlining previously, interdependency is definitely a concept that we need to manage, but also diversification. It's not, of course, isolating what we call our adversaries, but it is to be complementary and to be put in a position in which we can manage our resources and our defense much better. So Spain has a strategy to diversify, knowing that, of course, what we need to do is to have freedom of decision in the political decision-making process. So in order to obtain it, it's essential for us not to be dependent on one uh, country around the world that can have a, a certain controversy or a conflictual interest. Spain is, with like-minded countries, given several steps forward. And this tackles not only, of course, fuel, gas, or oil, but also strategic minerals mm -hmm. and uh, rare earths. Uh, so from that viewpoint, we're highly committed on working together with Canada. Yes, so I was going to ask, where, where does Spain get uh, its energy currently? Well, we are extremely lucky. First of all, I'm going to be uh, very clear to you. We are one of the countries in the world with more percentage of renewables in percentage terms because uh, we have sun, we have wind, we have water. This is making us, of course, uh, to obtain a very high percentage of renewables. Then we have diversified very intensely the origin of gas. Our first provider is Algeria, and then uh, the United States comes in second place. Uh, the third issue in which we are extremely active, uh, it's also in obtaining oil in a very diversified way. So right now, Spain is a very a stable country as far as energy resources is uh, um, concerned, and we have one of the most advanced programs in green transition. I would like to underline that because we can never forget the final point. And my government is highly committed with this green transition. Just I give you one figure. One fifth of the project for future green hydrogen around the world take place in Spain. One fifth. Mm -hmm. And do you do any, uh, do you uh, use uh, nuclear at all? Is that part of your mix? We have eight nuclear reactors oh. being operated being operated, of course, by Spanish companies. But of course, uh, our intention will be to base our strength in green energy, renewable energies that can be used in a better way. I see. OK, gotcha. Um, and uh, from, from your perspective, uh, do you think that uh, Canada and Spain can uh, deepen their uh, military and NATO ties? There's uh, I noticed that there's some talk of uh, the, uh, the British and the Italians working together on a new uh, sixth generation fighter jet. 
uh, these kinds of things. I know there's some expertise, obviously, in Spain uh, with respect to uh, aerospace. So what, what's the future hold for, for Spain in that regard? Extremely positive. Let me tell you that we are already cooperating. First of all, it's not very well known, but you are commanding uh, the Operation Area Assurance in Latvia. It's a wonderful operation. And uh, the first contingent at military level is the Canadian, and the second is the Spaniard. We have more than 600 people under Canadian command. Second, our cooperation was clearly proved with tangibles. During Madrid summit, you know that the NATO Madrid summit that took place on the 28th, 29th, and 30th of June was fantastic, and our delegations were coordinating themselves in a very clear way. And thirdly, you cannot even imagine also the depth of connections between Spanish military and Canadian military regarding also technology. Um, we have already implemented several contracts in Canada. You are supporting us in Spain, and this know-how is being, of course, shared in a very active way. Uh, just, Mr. Clement, to tell you, Spain and Canada are Atlantic countries with a very similar uh, demographic strength, very similar and compatible right. military operations, and with a historical and cultural vocation that is bringing us together. We can never forget also the huge presence of Spanish culture in Canada, right, right. 1.2 Spanish uh, million Spanish speakers, and also the huge exchange among technicians and students in both ways. I'm glad you mentioned that, sir. Unfortunately, our time is up, but it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for coming on our program.